Good morning, all. Perhaps you're thinking, what can I do to give my life meaning on this Sunday, this day of rest? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can uh, sit and learn these solos with color. Uh, for <laughs> I'm gonna start at the top of the playlist. By the way, self-titled album, Color Failure, it's on uh, Apple Music, on Spotify, on all of the things. Go listen to it, go buy it, gift it to people for Christmas, whatever. How I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna play the solo and then I'll go down and break it into some theory and I'm not gonna get too crazy with the theory so don't be intimidated by that. But anyways, here we go. That was shitty, Nick, we're gonna redo it. Okay, that was fun. Now let's break down the phrases and I promise I'm not gonna get too wild. I am gonna be talking about modes and intervals and stuff like that. So if you aren't savvy with that stuff, that's fine. If you have any questions about this, feel free to message me on the video in whatever medium you watched it on and I can break it down a little bit more for you. Also, quick moment, uh, quick self plug. I give guitar lessons and I currently don't have any students. Um, very reasonable rates if you're a high schooler with a you know, a part-time job, you can afford my rates. So not to say that they aren't quality lessons, because they are. In order to understand what any solo is doing, you need to understand the rhythm behind it. And thankfully, even though this song is in the key of C minor, I think, or, or relative major would be E major, um, all you need to know about this one is that we're going from G to G sharp and back. Okay, so nothing too crazy there. But as you'll notice, there's kind of a pulse, right? One, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one. So I tried to lock into that because I think that a groove is what really sets a song or a solo apart from um, less groovy things, and we all wanna be groovy. Most of this first part of the solo is all just on the G string. It goes like this. Pretty easy, so open G. And then you're doing a, a little hammer-on thing to the D note here. Then a half-step bend. And this is all happening when you're trim picking. The one thing I would point out is that when I'm doing these bends for a lot of this solo, I'm actually holding on to the top strings uh, because I do a lot of or I try to be, um, have controlled but wild vibrato, if that makes any sense. And I don't know if you can hear this, but my top fingers are actually, the fat of my top fingers is actually hitting the top two strings. So if I just go, you start to hear those other strings ring out. And of course, when you turn the volume up, it's louder. So what I do is I hold these top two strings. And you get a nice controlled vibrato. Then you're gonna slide from the D to the F, I believe. Yep. So. Nothing too crazy there. Try to make it legato, a lot of hammer-ons. If you look at my picking hand. I picked once for that whole phrase. Uh, also, make sure you're <clears throat> muting those strings for this part because if when you're doing all these hammer-ons, you're, you're gonna get some string noise from these if you don't. Uh, and then comes the part that's challenging, in my opinion. This, this whole phrase, I break it up into three different sections, but... It's an F Phrygian, which sounds, I'll play the whole thing so you can hear it and then I'll break it down. Okay, one more time. So <clears throat> the first phrase, the first part of this phrase actually starts on G at the 12th fret. And again, hold down to those top strings.
Then we go to the B uh, on the B string, it's a 12th fret. And then we go back to the G here and do this whole pattern. We end up back on the G. Do a little half step kind of groovy bend. Uh, and then just a, just a major chord. And then, <clears throat> so this is kind of the tricky part because this song isn't in, well, theoretically, this is sort of a wacky part. I guess it's not tricky. Um, this song is not in a harmonic minor or a melodic minor key. It doesn't matter if you don't know what that is. I'm just going to show you the shape. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm substituting a chord. So really it would just be uh, G minor, but I'm making it G minor major seven. So all I'm doing is uh, the arpeggio for that uh, G minor major seven looks like this, just out to one octave. So I'm starting at the seventh, which if you know your octaves, right? Here's our eight, oops, here's our seven. So I'm just doing a little hammer on. Okay, so real slow. Then you get that harmonic on the fifth fret of the B string. So all together we have this. And that, folks, is how you play the solo for Celadon Sky. If you guys like this, uh, you know what to do. Subscribe, bell, like, share, give me money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but really, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, please do share it. Or go to Color Failure, share our music. And uh, let me know what you think, both of the songs, of the solo, of my instructional video. Uh, I apologize, I'm a little rusty. I haven't been playing guitar like at all this last month. Uh, so I'm doing my best. But anyways, more of these videos will be coming. Next up will be uh, a song called Speak With The Sparks, and I'll probably put that out next week. So, okay, later.